Good morning, Atlanta. We uh, found a load yesterday that picks up uh, right here and takes us back towards home. So it doesn't pick up till noon. We slept over here. Let's fire this truck up and go get there. But first, let's kick off our green APU. And that kept us nice and cool last night. My goodness, we haven't even gotten into Atlanta yet. <laughs> We're about 17 miles south of the 285 down here, uh, right by Griffin, Georgia, where Hey Guy was. We went there yesterday, if you saw the video. Um, great seeing them again, but just did a quick couple videos and uh, delivered that load. Now we're picking up this load. This load was just uh, booking now last night on, um, of all things, C.H. Robinson. My broker was already asleep. It was like 7 o'clock at night. We're not asleep, but off for the day. Well, I out. And I said, well, I'd like to get this for about 1000 Um, But with today's market, I'm glad it's not sitting there at 500 or 550 or something like that. So it was 800 Um picking up and delivering late at night so it's a 2 a.m. delivery but uh, it's kind of a straight through I guess but not really because it goes into the next day but the truck will be empty Saturday early morning so I said okay I'll take that let's me get home see the boys see T-dubs and then uh, head out because it's about 30 miles from my house where it's delivering and it's like 25,000 pounds so but where I, it's shipping from I've been to before and uh, I think it was like an appointment that was kind of a missed appointment that I was working. It took forever to get loaded, probably like six hours. So I'll be there on time for my appointment. I'll be an hour early. It's a 12 o'clock noon appointment. So we're going to get there at 11 and uh, it's Pepsi. So hopefully I've done, probably picked up here two, three, four times, something like that. But we'll see. But right now, let's at least get up to Atlanta and some early traffic. this time towards Birmingham and we're gonna pick up over Fulton County. Fulton County if you're new to trucking or never been in Atlanta that's where a lot of the uh, industry is for trucking it's on the western side of Atlanta. Can be uh, hard sometimes but they, it's pretty spaced out where you can get to most places but sometimes it's a little challenging but not too bad. A lot of, a lot of industry over there though. a lot of trucking companies have terminals over there Take a little loop around and catch on to 285. The airport is right in front of us to the right. 25 miles an hour. Let's get down. And I think Atlanta just became the, it was like number two in the world for busiest airports. I think it went back to number one. I'm not sure. I heard I saw that somewhere. There we go. 74 degrees today. We're getting warmer, which is nice. Got the AC on. And CH Robinson just actually called me and I'm just a regular like dispatch rep telling me what's my trailer number, what's my truck number, what's my name, that kind of stuff. Where are you? Are you empty? They want to know all these little things so they can just check it off the list and get you set up to go. Let's uh, get over to that pickup. You can kind of see the airstrip uh, lights right there on top of that little bridge. You see the red T's. Runway lights for the airplanes. That's actually the runway right above us right there. The planes go over this little uh, tunnel. Well, not a little tunnel, pretty big tunnel, pretty tall. <laughs> we got the big old fan, like turbine fans on the side. All right, we're slowing up. What are we doing here? Get over in front of the Walmart truck. Thank you, Walmart. Flashes lights for me. Some people ask, like, when trucks flash their uh, headlights or their their rear tail lights, um, marker lights, how they do it. They, a lot of times in the older trucks, you just switch on and off the lights, but these trucks have a little button on your steering wheel. On the right side, I have my trailing lights, like my marker lights on my trailer. Uh, and then on the left side, I have my headlights. I can interrupt them and kind of flash them, so... That's kind of cool. All right, everybody's trying to get over. We should go one more lane, but I got a flatbed next to me. I just don't like it because you have the opportunity of a car jumping in front of you like when they're going so much slower. 
So we will jump in front of this full bow. Somebody said something's coming to Okay, come on cars, don't jump in front of me. There we go. TMC truck taking off with a flatbed. But it really doesn't look like a trucking entrance, but it is. Oh yeah, Quaker, there you go. <coughs> ah, I was right. So Pepsi, it says Pepsi on the uh, Raycon, but it's Quaker 6200. So some kind of breakfast bars or something. I don't know, but it's going to a Dollar Tree right there by my house. It's early. Gives us time to check in and still get into the uh, shipping office before our appointment. Okay, let's go uh, get our check-in numbers going. We got a door right away. That's all you can ask for. 38, and she said. I don't know, there's, there's like three trucks blocking the way getting out, so. Pepsi guys, all good as 38, all right. Um, yeah, she said, slide your tandems, open your doors, and then disconnect. So you gotta disconnect from your trailer. Green light, reconnect, and come back up there, and they'll have your paperwork. Got a Martin truck in front of us. This guy's pulling out. Decent amount of room here, so we should be able to get into this door no problem. I got my, my hat matches 
my shirt. I didn't try that today. Safetyauditprep.com. Check them out. Any questions you have trying to like get into the industry, uh, think about starting your own authority. They will help you drastically setting it up and save you a lot of money. So, drug testing and all the compliance paperwork you need to be doing. Safetyauditprep.com. Looks like he's going right there. I'm gonna go past him, so I'm gonna wait for him because I need to set my trailer up on the left side so I have room for my tra tractor's nose to swing back around. Kind of like what he's doing. So while he's doing this, I'm gonna go open my doors. Nice Peterbilt right there too. The purple one. She's pretty. I don't like the flat top um, sleeper. I like the extra room, like the aero trucks, but it is a pretty truck. Purple tanks too. Okay. All right, he's almost straight. He just slid his tandems. I think we can sneak by him. He's going backwards. No, he's going to straighten it out. He is door 25. Squeeze by him while he's backing up. Okay, 38, where are you? Let's see, 34. Freightliner in the Volvo. I think I'm going to be next to the Volvo. All white trucks. Nope, I'm next to the Walmart trailer, coming all by myself. Next to the Hogan truck. Okay, 38, let's do it. Set up my trailer. Back her in. And then we gotta slide our tandems too. Throw the hazards on. Back it up, Terry. Let's get it in there. One thing about a hood truck, guys, is that uh, your stacks on the side of your truck can't see past them when you're backing your truck in. <laughs> so uh, you kind of have to reach out the window or open your door sometimes to see just the angle of your trailer if you're going to be uh, getting it in there. Oops, someone just bumped at me. Seventeen, okay. All right, no problem. So, uh, okay, cool. I'll go that way so you can go that way. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, she just came up to me and said, hey. <laughs> They want you to go to door 17. I guess that speeds up the process. So. All right, that was better than uh, backing in there, we told. At least we weren't all the way into the door. So now we got to back all the way down and go to 17. When you're putting that landing gear down, always leave a little two inch gap. So uh, if you're heavy, it won't um, be too hard to get back under it. Pull your pan, and you can disconnect your lines. You don't have to, but you should have enough width, but you can. Just so you don't yank on them at all. There you go. And this truck has an eight bag system. Uh, you can dump them all the way, but you can also raise them. My, my Volvo, I couldn't do that. So uh, you can raise the bags up, or and what that means is there's four bags on each side of the frame rail. For, uh, supporting my drive axles and the weight. Once it gets low enough, it's lowering the bags right now, it'll let me loose, which it just did. It just rolls out from under. Get to the back tire right about halfway of the trailer and air it back up. There we go. Okay, we are loaded. That was pretty quick. Took about an hour. And uh, we got our paperwork now, and I went live if you want to see that. to seal his own. There we are, we're out of here. Nice orange Dodge right there. Yeah, this truck up here is good. Must have a heavy load, he's going real slow. Go ahead and the SUVs. Uh, he's got to have some troubles, poor guy. 
it is probably the busiest truck stop out here is up here on the left and it's 120 right now so we're just gonna try and boogie and uh, get through Atlanta before this traffic builds up and builds up and builds up and there's that QT right there to the front of the line and jumps in like this blue car is doing like the last four cars did that got in front of me they just shoot to the front and then jump in come on everybody uh waited their turn we all merge wonderfully in a unison world there used to be where these two lanes are right here there used to be a bunch of these little things sticking up that you see up here Not too bad right now, one o'clock, but later on there's like people using this median middle thing to get their cars in here. Running over these little poles right here that are plastic like they did over there on that one. <laughs> Just mowing them down. It's all good. We are turned. Diesel didn't have time to get me in. They were so stacked up and it was right about Christmas time. They were taking their own family vacation time. So not till after Christmas was I gonna be able to get in like late, uh, middle of late January. So I was running for about three, four weeks without, uh, just with, with the motor having to burp the radiator cap, get the pressure out of the system. Cause if you're um, dropping a liner, what's gonna happen is after you shut your truck off, like even a liner engine cool down, everything cool down, there's gonna be built up pressure in your cooling system, your, your coolant. That pressure is gonna keep pushing a little bit of coolant into whatever cylinder, whatever cylinder cylinders are on the uh, downstroke and they have some, if they're all the way top dead center, they're not gonna get much coolant past the rings, you know? But if it's the piston's kinda halfway down or all the way down, that coolant, wherever it's leaking, is gonna leak down into that cylinder and it's called hydrolock. It'll push so much water into that cylinder or coolant that this engine won't turn over because the coolant's in the combustion chamber. So if you burp the system and let out all the pressure after each time you turn the truck off, uh, it won't have that pressure to push it into the cylinder. So that's what I was doing all the time. I had a hole drilled, tiny hole drilled on top of my radiator cap, and uh, I was burping the system every time I shut the truck off just so it wouldn't hydrolock the truck because originally that's how I knew something was wrong was the truck hydrolocked when I was sitting there on a Sunday. And uh, I had to back it off, use a big breaker bar, and get all that coolant out of there, and then try to start it, and it finally started again. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm okay, but it's, it wasn't good for the starter, for the um, flywheel, anything like that. I was just jamming against the dang starter. So anyways, that off-ramp right there, um, after running my truck for about two weeks, trying to make money, until I could get in to get my engine rebuilt with the Volvo, um, my Jake brakes stuck on, and I thought something was bad, drastically wrong with my truck, I didn't know. Uh, it was just, it, it was running like crap, because if your Jake stay on and you're trying to get on the throttle, it's, it's going against itself. It's, it's trying to derate the engine, plus you're trying to give it power. So I was like, okay, something's majorly wrong. 
but that's where it happened and I pulled over on the side back there and just turned the truck off prayed to God like what am I gonna do am I gonna get towed right now is it completely done for right now it towed down to hey guy I was on a load I had the truck the trailer was loaded so um, scary times but after sitting there for a while let the truck sit because um, the gunky in this and the oil the your jake brakes are just two solenoids on top of one of each set of rockers on these engines and if they get gunked in there they're not going to work right they're going to stick so that's what was happening the coolant was making my oils stickier inside the oil and uh it stuck those jakes so my jakes were sticking on but after a while let the truck sit there um it started back up and it, and it worked okay and i talked to alice and i talked to jerry and hey guy and kind of they told me what was kind of going on i said okay so i'm not gonna use my jakes <laughs> So I didn't use my jakes anymore after that, and I got in like the next week, and that's the story though. With that off ramp right there, we'll always remember like the scariest point of that engine failure. Besides the fact that my hydro lock was probably the scariest point, knowing that something's really wrong with the engine. Uh, but the, that was the second scariest where I was like, okay, am I done right now? Like, are we gonna sit here and get a tow and have to find someone else to glue for the slow and all that kind of stuff? But that's what you're worried about as an owner operator. You're, it's just you. I'd like to kind of build like a network of helping each other. Or, I think YouTube kind of does that. Like if any of us go down, we can kind of reach out and say, hey, uh, or on my Facebook page, that's a great place to reach out to. Check out Just Truckin' Family on Facebook. Uh, we have a couple moderators on there. I jump on there a lot and comment and kind of when I can if I jump on Facebook. Uh, but that's a great place to kind of network and let, let us know of a shop that you like in a different area. Let us know if you're having trouble, if you're if you're stuck somewhere like that happened to you and where your, your engine completely blows. Uh, reach out on Just Truckin' Family and we can kind of help each other out and let you know like, hey, I'm in the area, I can come bobtail and pick your trailer up, deliver it for you, that kind of thing. I think that'd be a, a lot bigger relief on the owner-operator side because on the owner-operator side, it's just you. You don't have any help. You don't have a dispatch you can call or a main headquarter terminal or a Schneider or Prime or anybody else to say, hey, send another truck or send another driver. It's just you. So, one truck operations can be stressful, but they can be fruitful and they can let you get home a lot more than... Uh, some of these other carriers that have contracts that take you away and leave you out for a bit. So it's nor here nor nor there. You take the risk with the reward, but you have a little more stress. That is my story about the on ramp, though, and I'm going to keep focusing on 285, which, cross my fingers, is flowing actually pretty good right now. But 75 interchange is coming up. My goodness. Man, the red car wouldn't. Oh man, road rage, be careful. Just sitting out in the middle of the road now. That just happened. So this is the hold up right here, I guess. A little bit of a wreck. I got auto zone and I got a little. Hyundai electrical vehicle, there you go. Well, the car's getting shipped, looks like they're taking the, the driver with them. There you go. Okay. That cleared up and move on to 75. Past 75. It's always pretty bad at this, uh, Greenville interchange, but with the accident, it's a little bit worse. But nice guy back there got on the CB radio and let me in. He's like, I got you, big guy. Thanks, man. Uh oh, work trucks too. That's not good. T's and P's, hope they can get it cleaned up and get moving. And we're almost to 85, almost out of uh, middle of Atlanta. Well, we're going to stop here at the good old TA. Lots of parking today on a Friday. And they have a Fuddruckers in there for burgers, but I don't think I'm gonna get a sit down burger right now. Just gonna get a little refresh, and then we only have about 70 miles till we're back home. See these babies? CT dubs. It's a nice W9 right there, a little oversized uh, flag in the front of it, banner. And I remember why I don't like stopping at this one that, that much, this TA. Uh, as you, I think it's exit 147. Um, I just needed somewhere to stop real quick. I felt like it was time after getting out of traffic, but Like when they were first designing truck stops, you think about location of where it was put um, You have to cross all lanes and it's a lot of traffic To get back to the highway. So this truck stop probably should have been on the other side of the freeway or 
on the other side of the interstate. So just so it could be easy in and off because you have to wait forever to get an opening. I've been sitting behind three trucks now and it's like one truck every two, three minutes. So, so you wait for our gap and wait for this car in front of us too. And, and that's why I don't stop at the TA because you, you're not really taking a right. You're not unless you're delivering down Athens, Georgia or something. But uh, other than that, you've got to go back across all lanes to get back on the highway. So you got to think about that stuff when you're making your stops. But what are your favorite truck stops? Oh yeah, back over Lake Hartwell. And you can see right there, there's a little cove. You got a fishing pole or something. You can uh, stop at this welcome center for South Carolina. Maybe hit the little, uh, get a little catch something right there off the shore. I don't know. But uh, there is kind of a fence up towards the top. And there, but there's also like tables you can sit at and kind of enjoy the lake because the lake's all there behind it. So remember that exit one, that little welcome center. You can just stop right there. And our buddy Stan, who has helped us on a couple projects with the cars, he sent me a, a video today. He's at, actually at Lake Jocassi today. And the water temp is 65 degrees. A little chilly, but I mean, you can do it. 65 is not too bad, but we like it to be in the 70s, uh, high 70s, so it's not too cold. We'll let the Schneider trailer come on next to us. And uh, yeah, there's Lake Hartwell. I, mean, I would imagine Hartwell's probably warmer than Jocassi because Jocassi's getting fed all the. Um, there's a nice boat. Somebody's out there. Get some sun. It's 84 degrees right now. I think we'll go ahead and pass uh, the extra lease. I like to run like 63 miles an hour, 64, uh, just to save fuel, especially right now with that much fuel cost. But I'll pass somebody in just so I'm not always on their butt, you know. That's a nice uh, Kenworth on the other side of the road. That, that purple one. Purple trucks today. Trans Am. Okay, Trans Am. That's worth that fast. Uh, he's got a nice cowboy hat on. There you go. But yeah, the lake is uh, getting ready for sure, but it's warmer because Jocassi feeds into Lake Kiwi, which feeds into Hartwell, and Hartwell goes all the way out to the Savannah River, all the way out to the coast. So it's just a little series of lakes that feed to a river that goes to the coast. And speaking of the coast, our uh, visor's out there in Savannah. That's where uh, Real Trucker 3B, uh, our buddy Barry, that's where he's at. So. Can't wait to see that's gonna be pretty cool. And I will get that dang visor on the truck, I promise. But right now, let's get on through South Carolina. We're exit 50 is the 385 that takes us down to the house. Well, all right, all right. We are home. We'll take these kids to the park and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. It's about five o'clock. Got through Atlanta traffic, we battled. And we're gonna go see these babies. And I'm gonna take a little walk on the wild side and get back home. Home sweet home. Red truck's over where I park my truck usually because I'm gonna take off again tonight and deliver. So, no sense in parking it and bringing it back here. Birds are chirping. Somebody's barking. Hey, puppies. Hi, dude. You do? How'd you know that? The paw. What's up, baby? You're out of school for two days. Yes. Good. Oh, oh. oh in the trash truck? Yeah. Wow. That's what I did. Also, I want to cut out something else. I need the paw on a shirt to make a paw on my metal. A paw on your metal? Paw, I'm not sure if that'll be the trophy. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is a wrap. We are at the park, and Kylan wants to swing. God bless you guys. I'm going to deliver this tonight, and then uh, T's and P's for Katie and her grandma. Watch out, Casey. He's going to come back faster. <laughs> Teed up grandma. We might go see her up in Virginia. Is that better? Yeah. All right. Yep. All right. Well, God bless you guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay, stop. Well, we will see you on the next one.